guys. Right, this is, um, I'm actually filming this after I filmed this video, so uh, you're seeing it before, but I've actually filmed it after. Um, I hope you're enjoying this little build. It's, uh, it's, it's faster paced than the other one, let's say that. Um, so I've basically covered bait, <laughs> it's part, four parts of the other one in one part of this. So, um, or two parts of this, should I say. Um, and also had some comments about sound. Now, as you know, I bought a new mic uh, from, from Amazon. It was a total of about £6.67 or something. So I bought a new mic from Amazon and I suspended it under the camera. And a few people complained about a humming noise. And there was also some strange clicky crackling noises as well. So someone suggested it could be interference from the light. So I actually moved the mic down. So it's hanging probably about five, six inches below the camera. So it's literally right in front of my face. And I think it's cured. It could be something I'm not picking up. It could be something that you're hearing after it's edited or something. Please let me know what you think. Um, I hope it's OK. Uh, I hope it's all good. If not, then I'll go back to the old sort of, you know, the iPhone mic and um, and then just wait until we get a new camera. So, uh, yeah. So, um Anyway, enjoy this. Hey everybody, welcome back. Nigel here. So here we are with part two of this um, Airfix 124th Hellcat build. And this one is in the uh, scheme of the um, Fleet Air Arm from the UK in uh, World War II. So um, as I mentioned earlier, this one, th there is a scheme in the instructions for it. Um, but I have now seen one in uh, with D-Day Invasion Stripes, so if applicable, I'd like to build this one as that. So, but it's definitely going to be a British aircraft. So, um, or British run aircraft, it'll always be an American aircraft, but run by the British. So, um, I said on the end of part one I was going to go away and paint all this. I then realised that was pointless because I need to paint in behind here and everything. I need to get the... Um, this front bulkhead on before I actually start painting in there because obviously otherwise this is all going to be grey plastic exposed as well. The idea of this guys is so that when we paint all the cockpit and it's all done we don't look in on a certain angle and see grey plastic that's why I can't stand so I try and make sure that I get all areas covered. The other thing I do is if you look at my other build I'll paint in this area here as well because when we put the seat back on where is the seat back here it is we've got that hole and it'll be impossible to get paint in there so it's all visible um, and if I don't use the dinghy in the bottom then that is obviously visible so we need to uh, make sure we don't forget to do that so uh, right let's carry on um, all the ejector pin marks are now gone and rubbed out and they've all dried it's still Tuesday evening so it's uh, what is it um, just gone half past eight so we'll uh, we'll get this um, this part two pretty much on the way tonight and probably finish part two off tomorrow and then I'll get back onto the other one. Uh, I also want to get some work done on that Bronco because um, that is a really interesting little project. Um, so I need to fit the armour plating here. Uh, as the same as the other one, basically get in here with a sanding stick and remove some material from this groove. This sits down over this wedge shape here. That wedge is actually, if you look at your references, I do show a picture in my other one, um, that is actually a stretch of material that's coming off of the headrest and going on, down onto the back here. So um, it's worth noting that that is actually what that is. And I'll add a little strip on here because it, it sort of came down and it went on with poppers. Um, I've got one picture of it in black leather and I've got one picture of it in, like, um, in canvas. So both of these are going to be in canvas. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get my extra thin quick setting and put some across there. And then we can go in from behind and put some in here just to sort of lock it in. There we go. Actually, I can just touch it on the side there. Well, it needs to be, it's actually a separate piece. So it needs to be like a separate piece. And yes, I know it looks quite thick, but it actually is quite thick in real life. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we don't want to go thinning it down too much. Okay, so that's that done. And then we're going to add this rail. Remember the last part, I actually took the, um, the seat belts off of this rail. There's a nice side and a rough side. So make sure the nice side is facing up. I'm just going to pop that into those square holes there. 
like so and just like the other one one side is tight so I'm just gonna have to come in here with a sanding stick and just remove some from there And then just there we go I knew it would go in eventually so we are so that's in there now so I can just dab some cement on there dab some cement on there so that's glued in just got some oozing there which I can't stand to see And if you catch it quickly, the beauty of this extra thin quick setting, it sort of dries very fast and it sort of, you, the, the plastic that oozes out can be just wiped away. It's almost like it's got talcum powder on it or something. It doesn't sort of stick to everything. Oh, I keep breaking this lever off. I keep touching it and snapping it off. Which I don't understand. I didn't do it once on the other one. So, don't get that. I also noticed I had a comment on the other one. Um, someone was saying I should wear gloves. Well, I don't like modelling with gloves. I, I can't, I, I lose some of my uh, dexterity with gloves on. So that's the reason I don't use them. Um, they talk about grease off my fingers affecting the plastic and the paint and blah, 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 blah. Um, don't think I've ever really had an issue, to be honest. Um, I do tend to wash my parts, although I say that I haven't washed this one which some people will think is sacrilege, but uh, hey, such is life. And uh, yeah, I, I, I tend to not bother um, about my hands. I've never really had an issue. So this is six millimeters wide. So if I cut a piece of plastic strip, six millimeters wide, like so and then just go across there and all I'm looking for is just something to represent the little if you look at your pictures your, your references you'll see there's actually a flange here and there we go so I can just put a dab of cement in there and let that go under I've just I've got a new bottle of um, the extra thin quick setting so I'm getting loads of glue on the brush as you can see I'm probably going over the top with it just touch that lever again so I'm just going to trim that end off there we go and that's one good looking little extra just to add a little something extra to your model if you look at your references, you'll see what I mean. And you get a bit of Mr. Surfacer in there just to close that gap up. As I say, that is the piece of material. And the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use my plastic weld. And I'm going to go over this headrest and just give it some texture. And go over the liquid cement and melt it all up and just give it some texture. There we go. There we are. Okay, so that's that done. So all of that's done now with the belts removed and that. So now we can add this to this, uh, this assembly here. Now on the other one I noticed that what I had a problem with was these gaps. You can see there's some gaps in there. So what I'm going to do so I've cut some pieces of plastic card you can see down here. I'm going to see if I can wedge these in to close up those gaps. Yeah, it's a bit tight. Oops. 
So I need to um, just sand the front of it down a bit. I tried some 5 thou card and it was too loose. This is 10 thou. So I'm just going to sand the edge of this off. So now I should be able to put that in. Oh, that was silly. I should be able to put that in there now. Okay, so they're in there now. And um, I ended up just sanding, put a bit of taper on them and then they uh, pushed in. And that's all glued. So it's basically, I've lost that those, those three gaps, which were a bit of a pain. So um, I'd advise you do something like this to just lift that floor up to get rid of those gaps and then you won't have those um, those unsightly holes. But also you can see that where the tabs are moulded, it kind of steps away. So you've still got gaps there. So it still needs a, a drop of Mr. Surfacer if you're, uh, if you're fussy like me. So um, let's get rid of those out of the way. So we just check our floor and we have got 72 millimeters. That's absolutely fine because we've got plenty of movement in it. And if you notice as well, I haven't glued these, these um, buttresses at the back here. I'm going to let them stay as they are because the floor has got plenty of movement in it. So there we go. So that's that done. Now this pipe, this pipe goes in, if you remember on my last one, I said that it was too short on this end. It's not my fault. If you look at the way that's been made, you can see the end of it is kind of, it got some flash on it or something. Um, so it's, it's obviously um, been incorrectly made. So it wasn't my fault at all. So I'm just going to cut that flash off and then I can slot this down in here. get that pipe in behind there and then it'll all slot down in there we go it just clips in on its own really it's a lovely fit so that one will go down in that hole there that one will go down in that hole there and that's it and as you can see this one here doesn't quite reach so I'm going to take some of my extra thin quick setting put a drop in there a drop in there just to hold it and then a drop either side there just to hold it in place and there we go locked and loaded okay and now I'm going to get a piece of one mil is that one mil I don't think it is there we go guys a piece of one mil rod glued in there literally about two millimeters long and I'm just going to take the top off it just like that and then I'm going to put this kit part on top of it bit of glue and that's that job done yeah it looks like they may have an ejector pin problem on the end of there so there we go and I'm just going to paint some glue along here to help remove the, the fluffiness from what I've been sanding. And I've hit that knob again. I'll just put some glue on there. If I keep hitting it, I'm just going to have to leave it off, I think. Right, so that's all of that done. Obviously, except for these uh, rudder footrests. So now moving along, that's all glued up nice and solid. Just check our distance again. Yep, 71 and a half. So that's fine. So now what we're going to do is put together the rudder assembly. So I've cleaned all this up. There's a lot of flash on this part. It's worth looking carefully at your kit parts before you fit them. Um, there's flash all down in here, there's flash all up here and um, yeah, sprue nibs and mold seams and all sorts. So it's worth um, worth giving them a good clean up before you start. I'm still finding more now, look. So, because uh, the, these pedals are quite visible on the, uh, on the finished model. 
So I'm going to take take these here and put them in. Now again, they're a very tight fit, so it's worth just coming along with your sanding stick and just come at an angle and just remove some of the thickness and it will help you tenfold because then you see you can get the part down and it seats down with the parts as they are they tend to kind of wedge in and you end up with a gap in the join so if you just remove some of that thickness makes them go in a lot easier and it allows the part to butt up to the bulkhead okay so there we go that's that in like that and then the rudder pedals we just push over and sit like that again they're tight as well so they can uh, do with a little nudge that one's not going right home Not that it matters, but uh, let's get some glue on there and some glue on there, get on both sides, and that should start to melt, and then it will probably just pop together then quite easily. So that's all that glued together. Put some glue around the top here. That's all out of sight. And then drop this onto there and see how it looks. Again, I'm going to remove some thickness from here. And from here. Just to try and make it all fit together a bit easier and not be so stressed all the time. Now for some reason that is pushing away. And I don't know why. Okay, what I'm going to do. Just make sure there's nothing on there. And I'm just going to. A light scrape in there. And then fit that down in again. I'm not quite sure why it's all pushing away all the time. Maybe a bit of shim in there would help. Same on this side. Just shows guys from kit to kit it's going to differ because, which I can't believe because they all come out of the same mould. I had no problem with this on the other one at all. It's obviously there's a some edge or something on there which is pushing it back very strange what I'll do is I'll just glue this front part here these two legs just hold them down I'm 
going to put some glue in here as well. It really just wants to keep springing forward so if you get the same problem just do as I do and um, just hope for the best <laughs> going to have to tape that I think. So we get a piece of masking tape on there. Pull that back like so. That'll hold it. It's not even under tension. <laughs> Hold it like so. And then I'm going to put some glue in here and just pull it all together and hold it. got too much tension on there I think. How very awkward. How very very awkward. together with tape. And there we go guys. So that's that all held together. So we can see how it fits in the fuselage. So, it looks like it is slightly too far back, but that's okay because it will spring forward anyway once it's all dry. But uh, that's fine. In fact, what I'll do is I will take that tape off. And then what I'm going to do is clamp it in place. While it's in the correct position. That's about right now, so when the fuselage halves go together, they will uh, pinch it all up like so. And 
as you can see this fuselage fit is a is a little bit problematic to say the least there we go you can see that the front's gone in and all this is in and the tapes holding it apart a bit but I'm not worried about that but the position and everything is about thereabouts that's where it should be so I'm happy with that right then guys <clears throat> here we go it's the next day now actually it's the still part two but what we've got here is a Hellcat breakers yard so uh, yeah I've done the seat um, assembled the seat and got some Mr. Surfacer on there did that last night um, so that's all ready for cleaning up now if you want to see how I do that go look at the um, the other video it's, it's just basically careful assembly and thinking about what you're doing for example you've got ejector pin marks on these inner faces here and you've got ejector pin marks in the base obviously if you try and remove them after you've built the seat you're gonna have a nightmare getting in there and sanding them so it's best to do it when it's an assembly you've got the base the back and the two sides so um and I've also painted inside there so we don't get a a grey plastic thing now I'll let this um so that I built this last night I've put the uh, Mr. Servicer on this morning um I'll let that go off a bit now and then I'm going to go around with the uh, cotton bud with alcohol and do some sanding and uh, and get that all blended in so it looks like one in my last video I said that the Edward set that's coming is um has a um a brass seat that you fold up and make uh it'll be probably too thin um i was talking absolute rubbish of course it won't be too thin um even if it was 0.1 that would still be um you know two and a half millimeters thick in this scale so you know it's uh it's, it's not going to be too thin it's going to be more like sort of uh probably 0 0.2 0 0.25 thick which will make it uh what's that six millimeters so it's still going to be over scale even then so um yeah um uh, if you are getting the Edward set, then the seat I think will look really, really nice as long as you do a nice job of it and um, and get it all soldered up and, and looking lovely. Um, saying that, if you've what if you're watching my Typhoon build along, the seat that's in that kit, even though it's 48 scale, it'd probably be suitable for this because it is massive. So um, yeah, avoid that kit like the plague. One 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 seven. Um, it's not good. Uh, it's a, it's basically an old 20 year old Hasegawa kit with Edward written on the box and it's got um, a few bits and pieces of photo etch in there but you know it's uh, it's not the best their new range of um, Typhoon Tempest kits are a million times better believe me if I'd known that when I, when I did the uh, build along then um, I wouldn't have bought it in the first place so anyway not a worry um, so I'm gonna carry on now with um, with this build and then once I've got to a point where I'm sort of pretty much the same on both then I'll stop this one and carry on carry on with this one uh, this is the American one this is the English one this is the blue one this is the green one well we call it the gray one so we've got the blue one and the gray one okay so I'll see you in a sec okay we got the fuselage well the um, fuselage house apart and I've got the cockpit out now you can see that I went on and did the black paint I've also put a little bit more Mr. Surfacer in there where there was a shallow um, ejector pin mark done these fuel pipes added the uh, the tape with the jubilee clips um, on there as well that's fairly simple it's um four millimeters wide uh was it seven millimeters long wrap that around have the joint on the outside and then those little bits of tape are about half a millimeter wide and just wrap those around and then when you paint it and dry brush it they will look um more realistic than just having the plastic bar there because there's actually a this is actually a box attached to the fuselage then this inside is a tube attached to the fuel tank and there's a rubber pipe with um, jubilee clips between them so um <clears throat> and they are visible when you look in so i thought i'd do those add a bit of interest um <clears throat> and that's basically that it's all glued up now i have put some sprue goo in here because there was a tiny gap so uh, when that's hard I'll, um, I'll sand that down and that'll look a little bit better not that it matters what it looks like because um, it's not going to be seen but it just it's just going to hold that in place and give it a little bit more support but you can see it's got some flexibility anyway so uh, yeah that dimension there that 71 millimeters that works well um, another thing is you'll see I've got masking tape on here I've done that on both of them reason for that is if I'm working on it I plonk it down onto some super glue or I, I, even some Mr. Surfacer or some glue or whatever or drip glue on it glue on my fingers pick it up this um, texture on this skin is is 
beautiful. They've done such a beautiful job and it would be so hard to recreate. So I've covered it up to protect it so that I don't damage it. Um, at the end of the day, I may have some glue left on from the masking tape, but that's okay. We'll give it a wipe over with alcohol anyway. So I've got these ejector pin marks in here, which need to be sanded out. And um, I've only done these, these front three on this one and the one in the tail wheel bay, uh, because obviously the rest of the fuselage will be closed up. And we can see that on here, they, um, they kind of go from positive to negative. They're really weird. If you look on, uh, if you're a Flory Models member, um, there's Palms build. He actually works for Airfix. And he's got his, uh, he's got a photographic log of his second uh, Hellcat build up on there. And you'll see in there, he hasn't bothered doing this, but you'll see the ejector pin marks are very weird. They're, um, they really show up when they're painted. They're, they're sort of not even flat on the ends. I've never seen ejector pin marks like it, but uh, I've never seen ejector pins like it. Normally they're they're um, they're either serrated to give them some grip as they bite to stop them. If like, if it's an angle, you put a grip in the ejector pin, and then if it's pushing out a part that's not straight, if it's like that, you can just push it out. But if it's like that, you don't want the ejector pin to do that or fold the plastic up. So you can you you um, serrate the end of the ejector pin so that as it pushes out, it keeps it square, it keeps it engaged. And you'll also see on some kits, you'll see these things called um, Z pins or Z pins. And you've got an ejector pin hanging out and it's like a, a wedge and it's the, the, the smaller end of the wedge is attached to the model. That's done so as the ejector pin comes out, it holds it in place so it doesn't fall out. Um, which is, uh, which is, it annoys a lot of people because they're there and you have to snap them off. Main kits are generally covered in them, um, but they are just part of the moulding process. So... Uh, yeah, injection moulding is um, is a wonderful thing, but it has its restrictions. So when you hear people moaning about stuff being out of scale and too thick and stuff, well, you know you you can't you you can't mass produce very very thin moulded parts with uh, you know with a good first time pass rate. You just can't do it. So you have to compromise you know, I think some of the best I've ever seen are Tamiya's engine cowlings in their 30 second scale kits they are incredible I don't know how they do it and, and they must have a huge scrap rate they must get lots of short shots that's what I can say so there we go so they're they're pretty much gone now and there so you've seen enough of that and then we've got that one back there which I'll just do in a minute um, something I am going to do on both of my models I think Airfix have made a, a big mistake here. Um, model this size, which is going to have so much work done upside down, and they've moulded this antenna on here, um, which is crazy, um, absolutely crazy. This is this is the kind of thing for me where you get, um, you know, this has not been designed by a modeler, I don't think. So basically, um, what I'm going to do is cut it off. So I'm just going to get my saw, and if you look. If you look at it end on, it's not actually dead flat on there. So I'm gonna just gonna get my saw and just put a slight angle on there and just cut the cut the antenna off and keep changing the angle of the saw. There we go, and it came straight off and fell on the floor. Um, so there we go. So that's now I can bang that and not worry about the antenna being lost. And then when it goes together, you can see here that what we will get is a there's like a flat on there so we can super glue that in or pin it or whatever just make another antenna draw that out perhaps I don't know but um that was something I seriously advise you do if you don't have a saw you should be able to just get it and slice it off with a knife and then you can stick it back on afterwards but it's guaranteed it's, it's you can see it there it's guaranteed to get broken off so I'll just do this one as well actually while I'm here so make sure this one doesn't fall on the floor because I don't want to get them mixed up There we go, that was that one gone. So that one's the US Navy one. In the box. And I'll get the other one off the floor and get that one back in the box as well. Right, I've brought you in close here to show you a couple of simple mods to improve the look of your model without spending any money. Um, <clears throat> so, this uh, seat frame support, the seat actually sits on there like that, and then this goes in the back of the cockpit. Here's 
what I prepared earlier and you can see that the seat frame is in and on the top of there the, these vertical tubes you can see I've drilled them out and that actually gives you a more realistic appearance um, because when it's all painted green you have two little black areas there so basically what I'm going to do is take a I've got a, a, um, a point mounted here I'm just going to make a, a pot mark and check that it's in the middle yes I'm happy with that so just push a little bit harder and it's just a little pot mark for the drill to pick up in okay so that's that one that needs to come out to me a bit all right so there we go that's in there like that now I can take my drill this is a 0.5 drill I'm not in a pin vise and just make a little spot Am I happy with the position of that? No, it needs to come forward. Am I happy with this one? Let's have a look. Just make a little spot on the face. Yeah, that one needs to come forward and go over. So I could do nice. Just if you look, I tilt the drill and point the drill to where I want it to go. Do a few turns and then stand it up vertical and it will pull that hole over to where you want it to go. Okay, so just drill like that and then do the same on this side. I'm just going to point the drill to where I want it to go and then stand it up. Basically you'd end up with an oval hole on the surface but the actual hole itself will be down inside. So this is absolutely fine if you're drilling stuff to put some ignition wires in or some cabling or something. That's absolutely fine. And then with the point of a knife you can just go into that hole and just turn a couple of times and just open it up and as you can see that just gives you a little bit more something to look at in that area makes it look a bit more fine and if you look at pictures you'll see a couple of aircraft have got tubes left open a couple of them have got rubber bungs put in there but um, yeah, if you just leave it like that it's going to be absolutely fine and I'm just going to take that Excess sprue them off the side there. And there we go. <clears throat> so once those have had a good clean up, the uh, those I say this the frame that'll be ready to mount onto the seat and go back into the uh, into the cockpit. Now the next one um, I've also done this in the other video, but I did it with the part in situ. These here are obviously levers, but the way it's molded, they've got nowhere to go. It's just all shut off. So rather than go and buy resin and photo etch sets and everything you can actually make this look look a bit better yourself just by just by applying a bit of um a bit of thought really what i'm going to do i'm going to make a, a pot mark there which is roughly in the middle of where that lever would go and then i'm going to drill a hole Okay, so drill into it a couple of turns, check you're happy with the position, get your finger out of the way, and then drill through. Okay, and then we can do the same next to it. What's nice, of course, is this plastic is so soft, it drills very easily. I would suggest doing this manually, not with a tool, because... Uh, It's um, not the strongest part in the world. It's quite thin and flexible. Let's just drill a series of holes like this. And then on this one, I'm going to go over on the angle. I hope you can see this, guys. Because in my opinion, this is something well worth doing. And then what you can do then is put the drill in the hole, in the middle one, and just go like this and just elongate everything a bit. And you can come along with your blade and just gently stroke along down either side of the holes. Like so until you end up with a, a 
a slot. You just keep on scraping away and cleaning up and scraping away. And you end up with a pretty good representation of a slot which gives the lever somewhere to go. And then when it's all painted and dry brushed and everything, and have the shadows in there, it really will make it pop. Now I'm just going to get the drill and drill in here on the same angle as the lever. It's going to be easier said than done. Then I can just scrape away and there we go. Now obviously this needs some more work which I'm going to have to do off camera because I'm going to have to do it through a magnifier but um, you get the idea and we'll do the same up here with these two levers and, uh, and then I'll come back to you and show you the end result. And there we go. You can see there, it's not the tidiest job in the world, but it's a vast improvement over a solid lumber plastic. And um, when it's down in the side, I mean, I'll show you how much of it can be seen. <clears throat> if I can get the light down in there, if you look down in here, you'll see there's the other one. So it's not 100% obvious, but if someone's looking around the cockpit, it just adds that extra little bit of finesse to it rather than like I say a lump of plastic so um, that would have been impossible for Airfix to mould uh, unless they made separate levers and a separate panel and everything and then the cost of the kit would have gone up so um, yeah that's a, that's a simple little mod you can do and there's the top of the seat there and what you can do is if you want to just make sure everything's all good and sealed and tidy just get your extra thin put a blob of extra thin on there just run the brush around it remove any sandy marks any fluff any bits of debris that are on there and uh, yeah there you go okay so um that's that so now we'll get on with uh, doing all of this here so I need to did you notice I was going to pause then and I decided not to so I need to get my sprue E and E24 is here this is deja vu so E24 can come off the sprue. Whoops. That's already broken away. So that's that. That's right where you can see we've got the same problem on the other one. I had a short shot. Got the same short shot on the same short shot on this one. So uh, it probably is a kit issue, not just me. Well not just my bad luck, should I say. And if you saw my little tool review yesterday on the cheap 495 nippers, um, Motti's Military Models came on and made a brilliant comment that I never even considered. And that was that they are awesome for photo etch. So that's going to be my next little trial for them. Is to see how well they work on photo etch. Now, I'm just going to look at this now. This short shot on the bottom of here, that leg should come down the same as that one, but it doesn't. And when you look in here, you can't even see it because it's here. Oh, yes, you can. If you look across there, you can see it. So I will extend it the same. So um, let me get this uh, all cleaned up, get these seams sorted, and then I'll be back. Okay, so there's that panel assembled. That's the uh, left console. And as you can see, I've added this little um, part here. I've added the extension there where the short shot was. It's basically 0.75 millimeter thick plastic. And it's, it's only about two millimeters long, uh, but what it does, it, cut, <clears throat> it comes down and it meets these ribs here. So it's sort of, you, you can see it. So you really want it to be there. Um, people know about it. So what I've always found, if, if I go and, and look at some models on a stand, if it's a kit I've built and I happen to know that, say, there's a great big ejection pin mark in the middle of the seat that actually looks like it should be there, 
Um, and I look at them and I go straight to that and I think, oh no, that I'm on to miss that. Look, they've left that there thinking it's supposed to be there. Or, you know, another favourite is undercarriage doors where they've got ejector pin marks that look like lightning holes and they're actually not, you know, and vice versa. People sometimes fill them thinking they're ejection pin marks and they're not. So um, I, I always try and correct things on a model if um, if, if it's visible. Um, sometimes even if it's not, it's crazy, isn't it? So um, I need to let that go off a little bit before I can do anything with it. I'm going to add some Mr. Servicer to this seam and I will be using the air scale instrument panel set on this one as well. So um, I have had a request to build this one with the cockpit out of the box. Um, if this was like a 148 scale or something, then yes, I would. But it's it's a big, expensive model and it's a big open cockpit. And um, I don't want to just build it out of the box. I, I want to add some detail to it. So and I also the Airfix instrument panels great and you get the decals and everything, which is great. You know, there's other kits out that you don't even get any decals for the instrument panel mentioning no names but um yeah I, I i don't much like the airfix instrument panel i think it's a bit soft to be honest and i don't like the way they've molded it all in clear the panel that goes over the top i think is lovely that um the night fighter panel and if it does in fact turn out that the f5 the f6 f5 did actually everyone have that panel then i will more than likely fit it um however i can't see the english would have kept that on there so um i don't know we'll have to look and see let's do some more digging for references but um anyway i'm going to get some mr servicer on this and then when that's dry i can do some work on it with alcohol and then we'll look at getting this in another quick tip guys with this um with this kit um something i did on my last one i thought maybe i've made a mistake but no it's the same on this one as well um don't glue the seat to the seat frame until you've dry fitted the seat frame into the cockpit because what you will see is the these feet go down into these slots in here and then you've got these pegs on the back that go in and if you actually push them down so they go in what you will find is the seat frame is bent so what we need to do is sand some material from the legs at the bottom so just hold the leg a few swipes with a medium stick and what you want to be able to do is put the the legs into these slots where they go like so and you want to be able to have it so that the those pegs actually go in without bending the frame so I need to take some more off of there And some more off of there. And just basically keep sanding until it just drops in place. Um, as you can see, if I push this in here now, it's actually bending the frame. And it'll probably uh, pull it away from the seat when you, uh, when you fit it. So just take a bit more off of here. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you take too much off because you've got all that area on the side. They're actually going into these whole these slots down in here. Um, if you've got the kit and you look in the instructions, you'll see what I mean. So um, just put those down in that slot. And you want it to just fall together, really. You don't want it to be under any pressure whatsoever. So that side's gone in OK. This side's still under a little tension, so I'm just going to sand some more off of this one and there we go it just falls in place now you see you can you can lift it out and it just goes back in so there's the seat frame actually remains straight so I've, I've sanded quite a lot of her there and also those holes where the seat frame goes don't sand it so it goes all the way it's supposed to be like that that rod at the back is supposed to be raised away from the uh, bulkhead okay another little tip for you for general modeling this is inside here i've gone round and wiped the um the mr servicer with a uh with a cotton swab with alcohol 
and as a result it's actually removed some of the Mr. surface that I put in those ejector pin marks now I'm not sure this is dry enough yet but if you take just cut a piece off the end of your skinny stick and then stick a pin in it like so you can then use that as a little sanding block to get into little tight areas and sand your Mr. Surfacer away like so okay so there we go we're getting near the end of part two now I think once I've got these two glued into the fuselage I've done the um, done this seam now and once I've got these all done and cleaned up and glued into the fuselage I think we'll call that a day for part two and then we'll get back to our uh, back to our American one right here we go then so if you didn't see my other build this will uh, this is quite important for you to see if you're going to build this kit when you fit this panel or this section of um, ribs into the fuselage you can see that in every area it's not fitting well okay now the fuselage is pulled in basically when you put all the cockpit and everything in so what you need to do is be clamping this to the fuselage so that it doesn't all split and come away so my suggestion is as I did with the other one is I'm going to put a bulldog clamp on the top there okay and hold those in you can see how much the bottom pulls out and then what I'm going to do is come in with a one of my reverse so I might use an ordinary clothes peg if it will reach yes it will so I'll already close peg on there and then if I can get in there with one of these reverse ones yep can get on there now This one's going to slot into there. What we need to be careful of with that one is we don't move it as it clamps. It would, you want it to, um, you don't want it to be doing this. So I can't get to that one now. I might be able to move this one and then get one in there to hold that. Yes, I can. So. It's just that bit there I've got to worry about at the moment. So that's all gone in and everything's fitting lovely. And I've just noticed I haven't rubbed down that Mr. Surfacer. How stupid of me. Take this off and start again and just rub down that bit of Mr. Surfacer there. See this sanding stick, I've modified it so it would go in there. You could do all sorts with these little skinny sticks. You could carve them about to any shape you want. And if you want it narrower, you can cut the end off like that. So you can get into tight places. Do you know what? Flory models should be giving me these sticks for free because I promote them so much. Or he should give me free membership to his site or something. If you're listening, Phil, come on. Come on, mate, get your hand in your pocket. There we go. Right, so I'm also just going to scrape away. Looks like I've got a thick bit of plastic there. So I'm just going to scrape that away. Bring that over. And park it in there. I need to move that over don't I so that so I can get that peg in next to it like so and then I can get one on the front and then I should be able to get one in there and then one in there and the reason I'm clamping it first is so I don't get the glue oozing out of it. Now, if I leave that clamped like that now, and I apply my cement, what will happen is the cement will run into the joint and just stay in there. Now, if I were to move this now and then start pushing it about and everything, then what would happen then is I would get glue oozing out of the joint. So that's why I've done it this way. 
and I want to make sure I've got plenty in there because I don't want it to split. You know, once it's all weathered and everything, especially when you start going in with the oils and the oils start getting into the joints, they can uh, soften the plastic temporarily. And if you've got any springiness there, it might just pull apart. So there we go. Of course, the other option there, if you're worried about oils ruining your plastic, you can use um, use lighter fluid as your thinning medium for your wash instead of um, instead of enamel thinners. I'm just going to make sure we've got some on there. And there we go. And I'm just going to hold that one down. That's under a tiny little bit of tension. That one. A few minutes holding that down, and that'll be fine. I think I'll put a peg on that one and get some glue in there too. There we go. <coughs> Job done. And that, my friends, is in there solid. And it's ready for the PE to go on there then. So that can sit there and dry. And then on the other side, same thing again. This one fits a bit better than what it did on my last one. So same thing again. Bulldog clamp on the top. And then I want to make sure I'm holding all that down. And I should be able to get up onto there. See now that one just needs those and perhaps one on the front here. There we go, that's enough for that one. So we get some glue in here. And some on there. Drop on there. And a drop on there. There we are. And then that one can sit and dry as well. So there we are, guys. That is it for part two. Um, in fact, no, it's not. We'll do this seat frame on. And here we've got a, a, we've got a square peg and a square hole. And that's just going to go up under there. So I'm going to glue the bottom first. I'm going to use the quick setting. I was asked the question, why don't you use the quick setting all the time? Um, purely because it's very very hot so like with that that I just did there with all those clamps if I put the extra thin in there the, the quick setting I mean I'm not saying it would for a second but it could all compress down and just eat its way into the fuselage um, tell you how hot this stuff is if you've got a glue joint and you crack it sometimes you put that on there and straight away it just fall apart because it just dissolves the joint straight away instantly and um, yeah that's why that's why I don't use it all the time now this here the seat what I'm going to do is get some tape I've got some here actually waste not what not put some tape down the middle just pull that over Check the frame is square on the seat and it needs to go over a touch by the look of it. And then I'm just going to put some of this, a quick setting in there purely for speed. Too much on that. Because I want to be able to hold this down and have it stay. There you go. Just put a drop more across the back there. And there we are. So there we go, my friends. That is step two finished. And basically this will fit in there. And drop back into those holes. And there we go. We're at the same step with this one now as we are with our American friend over here. 
so there we go thanks for watching um i look forward to putting part three up for you i don't know how long it's going to be because now i'm going to go back to this one well actually no right here right now it is wednesday the 26th of june and right here right now i'm going back to the bronco and i've got a product review for you so i'll see you in a minute